Hey boys and girls, this is Bill again. Uh, the build continues on our 0368 4K. Today we are going to be putting on the push rod tubes, the push rods, rocker arms, get our check our clearances, put our uh, lifter bodies in, and all that stuff. So uh, hopefully, if all the clearances turn out real well, then we'll be buttoning this up with fresh valve covers and the whole nine yards. So that's where we are right now. Hang on, here we go. Okay, so this episode we're going to be doing the uh, valve train, starting off with the hydraulic units and the uh, push rod system and all that. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting in the actual lifter assembly itself. And what you're seeing me do is I've got a little piece of safety wire there and I'm poking the little ball check valve that's in the actual hydraulic unit itself and I'm collapsing the lifter assembly the uh, hydraulic unit and getting all of the air and oil out of it. The reason I'm doing that is so that I can get my dry valve clearance later on. Uh, very hard to do this without doing a, uh, without collapsing them first. So anytime you're overhauling an engine, assembling the engine, you're going to collapse the lifter so you can get your dry clearance. Very important for setup later on in the engine. Uh, actually simple to do, but if you don't collapse them, uh, you're going to be tough it's going to be a tough problem. If you do end up changing a cylinder in the life of the engine, it is very important to, especially if you go from brand to brand, but definitely if you change the actual cylinder assembly from another, uh, from a different type of uh, cylinder, it's very important to check this. What I'm doing now is putting the actual cup in. It's flat on one side and then it has a, a concave cup to receive the push rod. I'm installing those cups. Uh, they just sit on top of the actual hydraulic unit itself. So right now I've got a light and I'm double checking to make sure I, just double check and make sure I have all of the push rod cups in the proper position with the concave section aiming out toward the cylinder. Now I'm putting the silicon O-rings. Uh, there's a square O-ring that's on the crankcase side and a round o-ring that goes on the cylinder head side and you can only push those in so far by hand um, what I like to do is I've got a screwdriver that's just the right size to fit inside of the push rod doesn't scratch anything doesn't leave any material uh, again you can go through your toolbox and find nor you probably have one but uh, I use that as a push device so I don't like hammering or slapping anything around especially on these parts interestingly on this engine of the eight push rods that uh, push rod tubes or shroud tubes you'll hear them called that uh, we removed from the engine during uh, disassembly we ended up scrapping six of them because of their condition they were either bent dented uh, and just a whole lot of other kind of damage so here we go just kind of push them in nice and gentle and it'll almost snap into place or pop into place so it goes in quite nicely and repeat as necessary now the other thing you'll see on this video is I'm not doing I'm only doing one side of the engine the reason is the other side is exactly the same so we're doing two cylinders at a time sliding these in boom repeat 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 so it's fairly simple uh, most importantly take your time make sure everything's right make sure your o-rings are seated important on a very important on a Lycoming engine much more important on a Continental because there's they're easier to get pinched or whatnot especially on the big six Continental so real important take your time lubricate everything as you see everything I'm doing um, per the overhaul instructions we are using the Everything's being lubricated with our lubricating mix for the uh, overhaul manual. So now we've got all the tubes in place and we will install the locking devices. These locking devices, it's just a metal tab that goes over. There'll be a lock tab for a nut, but these typically will come in your gasket set. You'll get a brand new set of these. You don't need to use 
the older ones. Then there's a lock tab that sit, sits on top of that on each cylinder. And after that, you'll have your nut that'll go on there. After you install the nut, then you'll bend the lock tab up, install the nut, lock, uh, torque it, and then bend the lock tab up. So the lock tabs are thrown away at overhaul or at cylinder change. If you are disassembling a cylinder, one cylinder or top overhaul, all the lock tabs get thrown out and you'll get new lock tabs. So you'll have to think about that when you're planning your maintenance for cylinder work and that kind of stuff. Spinning the nuts on, kind of slippery little devils now. But we're getting those all spun on and down in good shape. And use the torque wrench at all times. Our torque wrenches go out every year for calibration. Some folks don't do that. Uh, if you're overhauling an engine that you or someone else's life depends on, it's very important that you have calibrated tools. That's all I'm going to say about that. Close enough doesn't really get you on something of this nature. Now what I like to do my personal preference is instead of hammering or chiseling the lock tab, I'd normally use a pair of pliers, a uh, channel lock style, gives you nice leverage. The lock tabs are soft metal, and I like doing that instead of hammering on different things of that nature. So now we've got our push rods in. It's time to complete the circuit for the uh, complete the circuit for the uh, valve train. Most importantly is to put the valve rotators on the exhaust valves. On these cylinders, these are superior cylinders, you receive brand new valve rotators for the system with the new cylinders, which is nice. You don't have to reuse the ones off the old cylinders. If you had an overhauled cylinder, you probably will need to reuse those items. And then we're just stuffing the push rods as we remove them, the using, reusing the push rods. Now, the mystery here is we've got an engine which had Lycoming cylinders on it. We're putting superior cylinders on it. We don't know what the drive valve clearance is going to be, so we have to start somewhere. So we're putting the stock push rod tubes in, pardon me, stock push rods in and getting every, everything lubricated up and all that for assembly. Not until we have everything installed can we check the dry clearance to see if those push rods are in fact the proper length. Lycoming and Continental make their push rods different lengths for different applications or just different machine tolerances and all that. The other thing I'm checking here now is to make sure which cylinder is which, pardon me, which it valve is which on this engine the way it's sitting right now the intake cylinder or pardon me the intake valves are on the upper side of the cylinder the exhaust is on the lower side with the studs uh, also with the rotators and all that I'm just double checking and I'm making sure that I have the right or correct rocker arm in position the overall manual like homing overhaul manual is kind of vague on these original rocker arms. These are, were original rocker arms. They were sent out for overhaul, cleaned up, machined, and all that. Lycoming has since superseded part numbers and whatnot, but a good reference is service instruction 1454. Service instruction 1454 spells out which rocker arm goes in which position, and that's determined by the position of the drain holes on the rocker arm itself whether it's exhaust or intake and which way the oil spray is going. So that's something you want to check out as you're uh, installing. Have that with your data in front of you while you're installing these parts. Very important. You want to make sure that those are in the correct position. Just jiggling things in position back and forth. Everything's very well lubricated. These are very highly machined parts, so there should be no reason to 
hit anything with a hammer and all that. Sometimes it's uh, because there's such a tight clearance, it's a little frustrating to get these lined up and all that. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking down and getting the rocker arm located exactly where it needs to be. A little harder to do when it's on an engine on an aircraft. Now that we have the valve system in place, we are going to check the dry clearance. Now, Lycoming has a go no go, no go no go dimensions. I've got the feeler gauge set up for max no go and min go. So I've got that pretty much it's just a go or no go type of thing so I can check it out. Making sure that the valves are on a position that I can get the uh, max clearance on them. So sometimes you've got to rotate the engine around, make sure you're on the downside of the cam and you're, you've got full throw of your valves. Or actually no throw of the valves. And the actual clearance that we're checking here, the reason why there's a clearance is that hydraulic unit can only operate in a certain dimensional range and if your dry valve clearance is too much then you'll need to go with longer push rods again like homing has those you want to double check that in years past different brand cylinders had different machining let's say intolerances or differences and it was very important if you used an off-brand PMA cylinder to double check this. If a cylinder comes off an engine goes right back on the engine with the same parts, not a thing. However, if you're changing cylinders, doing a top overhaul, putting all new cylinders on an engine, it is very important that you check your dry clearance. And the gasket sets, especially on the small Continentals, gasket, gasket sets have the extra gasket so that you can pull the lifters and uh, collapse them and start from scratch. So very important, you want to make sure that your clearance is where it needs to be. So once that's done, it's pretty much just valve covers. Unlike homing, they use plastic buttons on either end of the rocker shaft, the Connell's not. So we're installing those, all brand new buttons, they come in your overhaul gasket set. We're degreasing the valve cover area. Just making sure there's no dirt, no oil, no slime. And these will go on dry. We don't know what's going to happen on this engine as far as baffling, cowling, etc. So we're putting these on dry so that the, which is fine, the engine can run that way. Uh, we don't know if the owner is going to eventually put silicon gaskets on, so these may be changed, but they'll be fine going on dry. They will not leak. The most important thing is if you have valve cover leaks, there's all sorts of solutions out there. The most important thing is get rid of any corrosion, any kind of scale, any kind of sealant, that's any kind of residue that may be on there. It's got to be a clean surface. That's all there is about that and we're getting on there it's a little we've got to make sure that that rocker shaft is uh, if it's not just exactly centered then the uh, cover may need a little adjusting to get it laid down there correctly another interesting note these are superior cylinders and the new cylinders come with new valve covers kind of interesting if you saw in our earlier episode when we were doing the painting we repainted the old Lycoming valve covers. They looked absolutely beautiful. However, because Superior has improved the rocker arm bosses and beefed them up or thickened them up, the Lycoming covers are actually too short to install. So on a Superior cylinder, you have to install a Superior valve cover. So.
These are going on with all new hardware. The cylinders come with all new screws, washers, gaskets, valve cover, quite nice, all ready to go. As you can see, it's a uh, very complete system. So kudos to Superior for doing a good job. And repeat, gasket, that kind of stuff. Hey boys and girls, that about wraps it up for this episode of uh, putting the valve train in and all that. So I'll come back and uh, torque up all the valve covers, the uh, rocker covers. So everything as far as that is concerned is done. Next episode, we're uh, we're going to finish up some of the intake tubes and all that, and then see what else, what other kind of stuff we have to go. Um, in the meantime, like, share, subscribe, notify, uh, and comment if you want. If you see something I'm doing wrong, let me know. Um, hopefully you guys learned some stuff, uh, or it's just, hopefully for all y'all, it's just a refresher. So that's what's going on here. It's a hot day, um, but we've got the, uh, we have the valve train done on this thing. And uh, next step is we're going to put the, uh, all the intake pipes in, uh, oil drain back tubes, uh, some miscellaneous hardware in the back of the engine, and that kind of stuff. So that's where we are right now. We'll catch you guys later. Rats out.